what I'm about to show you right now is never seen before. Nobody showed you these things before. Nobody has access to it. This is a true Russian business. It's a street business, a street car business. And what you're about to see right now is fucking dope. You won't see these things anywhere else in the world. This is where the cars get painted. This is where they get put together. This is where the body work happens. I mean, I recognize this vehicle from a very, very long time ago. Alex had this thing for a very long time. Alex is a fucking guru when it comes down to cars. I learned and picked a lot from him. The street business, the street car business, is a whole different ball game from going and buying cars at the dealership. I'm showing you the behind the scenes of how the whole process gets put together. Enjoy. происходит магия здесь делаются машины здесь они красятся конечно нет ни у кого никакой лицензии на покраску все делается вот в таких простых условиях все дышат краской это на самом деле такой уличный машинный бизнес в основном все эти машины продаются на улице со знаками вот некоторые из них уходят на дилерские но сделано здесь все очень просто но со вкусом if your car been in a front end accident, rear accident, that's how we pull it. That's how the frame gets pulled. There's no front end on this little baby. You can see the damage right here. It's a, it's the car has been salvaged. Now we'll pull the frame, put the bumper frame. Woo! Sonny! Bravo! What's up, motherfucker? You still around here? You still alive? Yeah. How you been, dog? Dude, it's been a long time. You haven't changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you feeling, man? Yeah, you're not looking for again. Huh? Yeah, I'm not looking for again. No, bro, you're fucking, Maybe. Look fucking beautiful. Yeah. You look young, man. No more cocaine? Yes. Still? Yes. Oh, <laughs> man. That's my boy, man. We are, we are making a movie. Oh, yes? I live in Hollywood, man. Oh. I live in Los Angeles. You know, are you in California? Yes, yes, A lot yes. of Mexicans are there. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, but life is good. This is sunny. Man, I met this guy, no bullshit, like eight or nine years ago in another shop and he's been with Alex, the guy that owns the place and runs the place for quite some time. Hey, look at you! Oh, what happened shit, to you, man? bro? Looking good! I'm so used to you sticking fucking guts sticking out over me no, like that. No, more guts. My man! How you like that? My man! You're looking good too, man. What's my going man, on? My man, dude, I am so happy to see you like yeah, that. Man, man. Holy shit, you know what I thought of myself? What the motherfucker should be at? I'm a millionaire right now. You should be a millionaire. Why? Because the hustle you put in. I'm too stupid <laughs> to be a millionaire. He's a police officer, so he says, if he, you know, if you ever need help, you know, he's there for us. I'm looking at his car. He says, internal FBI business. I'm looking at Alex, and Alex looks at me. I say, Alex, did you see this car? He says, yeah. I say, Alex, don't worry about it, because FBI agents, they need to get fucked too. So you just fuck one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you this. Everything that I made, gone. Yeah. Everything that I made illegally, everything that I made not honest way, is gone. gone. Yeah. I had to start over from zero. In LA, dude, I had to start it from zero. This girl that I moved with me, who crazy lady, totaled my car, I set it here, and then Alex and Marcus had it. And then I had $5,000 in my account, and this bitch pulled it. And I had no money, I had to start everything from scratch. And every single dollar that I made here is gone. But what I got left with me is the hustle. And I could never take that from Bro, you just like you told him, I'll go back on the street right now, I'll be alright. I start right. from zero, I'll be alright. You know, I'm not gonna die. Knowledge. Yes. Knowledge. And that experience that I got here on the street, you cannot buy anywhere. You can the hustle buy. the hustle doesn't go in your cells, it goes in your blood. You know the stage there. I remember very clearly how you call me a junkie and why you come out high over there on oh, man, I wanted to kill him. I used to sell cars from Alex, dude. I sold a lot of cars from him. I yeah. sold hundreds of he cars. He came from high. Him. I said, man, I don't want to see you like this no more. I said, sell the shit, but don't do the shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you have to, you have to. <laughs> So this is the one of the last places where the, where the car goes after it's been done with body work, after they've been painted, waxed, after they've been fixed mechanically. Sometimes we wouldn't fix it entirely. We'll just bring it, car wash it, make it look like a little candy and pop it. When you sell cars in the street, you have to be a smooth cat. And the smooth cat I was, 
car wash, man, I spent so much time here bringing my, dude, I had a story like this. I remember pulling up here with a motorcycle and uh, I used to sell motorcycles as well. I had a Honda CBR and I had a Kawasaki Ninja for sale. I remember pulling up here, my, my uh, Honda CBR, where here's a detail shop. I pull up with my Kawasaki, take my helmet off, and there was this really sexy Indian girl right there. I take my helmet off, and this curly hair, just shake it off, and she's like, who are you? I look at her without any hesitation. I say, I'm a skydiving instructor. And I go for a dive. Man, I made that shit up, and guess what? Next day, I was on my motorcycle, going to Chicago skydive to try my first, very first experience, and I actually did four jumps solo. That was pretty badass, but this car watch brings me a lot of memories, and I mean, this place, they're all special to me. Dude, it's so fucking, it's so fucking cool because some places changed and some haven't. This place haven't changed at all. This is one of the mechanic shops I used to fix my cars. I mean, dude, when I say fix it, it's just make it look nice or make it run nice just for the sale. What happens after? Nobody gave a fuck. Let me go see if this guy's still in there. Сыны, короче, когда-то я здесь сочинил машины, столько памяти у меня, столько памяти. У нас даже здесь уже отопление есть. У нас когда-то не было отопления, стояли такие торпеды, блин, которые мы топили газом, вернее, керосином заливали, поджигали, то, чтобы было тепло, потому что Чикаго очень холодно. Вот, и я здесь сочинил огромное количество машин. Интересно сюда вернуться после пяти лет и запаха, да, чувак, который здесь работает, до сих пор здесь работает турок, он говорит, man, I'm sick and tired постоянно, я так устал от этого бизнеса, но чем мне заниматься, вот, и, ну, такая ностальгия. Сейчас чайку попьем, попьем чайку сейчас с этим, с чуваком, который владеет, и будем ехать дальше. This is the expert. Вот, чувак, владелец. It's an interesting journey, bro, I'm so happy that I left. You're right. You I know. am so happy that I left Turkish. If you knew my life, you would be jealous, boys. I will, man. I you... live in Hollywood, man. I live by the Hollywood sign in Hollywood Hills. You know, I wake up every day to the beautiful weather, palm trees, the beach, the ocean, the blue skies, beautiful women. So, that's so, your life. So here we are, guys. This is the setup. This is Addison and Pulaski. This is where I moved hundreds of cars, literally. I used to come and sell cars here at three o'clock in the morning. Sometimes people would pass by, see the sign. They would rack their car at night or they will need a car to go to work in the morning. They will hit me up, say, hey man, my name was Kevin. I would pick up the phone absolutely 24 seven. And before I come and pop a car here, I will go around the block, see if there is any cops, secretary of state, because this shit is illegal. If there is any gang bangers around because people can actually jump you while you're selling the car and take your money, actually take your car. So I had to be extra cautious, but to be honest, I never had any any problems. My name was Kevin, everybody knew who I was. Latin Kings, drug dealers, pimps, prostitutes, illegal immigrants, gang bangers, I mean, you call it. I used to sell cars to anybody that didn't want to go to a dealership and, and deal with a guy at the computer who checks your driver license. So this is uh, one of the cars. I don't know who's selling it, who's selling it now. I used to pay uh, about $200 a month for every parking spot. I had about six spots like this around this area on the busy corners. Let's see this phone number up and see who, who this guy is. Maybe I know him. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yes. Hi there, I'm calling you about the car for sale. Okay. Which one do you have? Uh Edison and Pulaski. I got two over there. The gold one or the green? The the gold one, the gold one. Oh, the price, yeah. Okay. What year is this car? 2000. 2000, 2000. How many miles? 172. 172. 142, is it actual mileage or no? No, 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 original mileage. Original mileage. Can we, um, um, uh, any accidents with this car? No, no accident. It's a clean title or no? Clean title. Clean title. Um, is there a VIN number I can get so I can run the Carfax? And how much do you want for this car? I like this car. Just, just the VIN number. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the windshield is dirty. How how much do you want for this car? Thirteen hundred. One five five hundred. One five five hundred. Do you do you have the room to negotiate? Do you have any room to negotiate? Um, let's say if I have like nine hundred dollars, I can pick it up. No, no, I like, I like, I like this car. I like this car. So if I want to take it for a test drive, how can I do it? Okay. All right. Let me uh, call my wife really quick. I'm, I'm gonna see if I, uh, if she likes this car. We can probably give you twelve fifty. Would you take twelve fifty? Okay. All right. Then let me let me call my wife and we will work it out. I'll call you right back. Okay, brother. Thank you, man. <laughs> So here we go. This car, the guy wanted to get what fourteen hundred dollars. He probably spent about six hundred, five hundred fifty at the auction. I'm telling you, this car doesn't have one hundred forty thousand miles. It has probably triple of that. It's been rolled back to something believable. But if you need the wheels, you know, you pull up twelve hundred dollars, twelve hundred dollars in cash. The guy will let it go because she wants to make it quick. But you know, if I could hear, because I used to do the same thing, and if Indian called me. I would never come because Indians usually brain like I mean they fucking brainwash you. You know what I mean? How much do you quote for this car, sir? Oh, is it a clean title? Oh, salvage. Okay, okay. You know, if I sold the fucking car to an Indian guy, I felt five times better because those guys are fucking smooth. But I was smoother. Let's keep rolling. <laughs> So the last, the last stage of my car deals was performed here. Uh, I mean, it used to be here. The place used to be here. It used to be a Curiosity Exchange kiosk with my favorite lady Rosita. I literally sold sold hundreds, if not thousands, of cars out of this location. We had a few kiosks here, uh, not here, just around the area around Chicago. We found the loopholes, and we knew how to do all the title work, all the paperwork. Everything was performed here. There was. Probably one of my favorite spots because when you bring people over here, you know the deal is closed and you're getting that cash money. I actually remember my car got towed right across the street and I didn't care because I just made that cash. That's wrong. gone from one shop to another completely different level completely different setup but the same principle this is a shop of one of my friends he started from zero and now he's here American dream American dream alive let me show you around this is the car business this is Russian business Woo! that was a good one <laughs> legit setup it's something that I really wanted for myself when I was actually working towards this type of vision this is a high-end vehicles so they get them and all sorts of accidents. It actually takes sometimes one car with front end damage, another car with a rear end damage and make out of two cars and make one just because they can have all the parts. It's like playing chess or Lego, you know what I mean? It's a very interesting business. It's a difficult business. It's not easy. It's very risky. Sometimes you can buy a lemon. Sometimes you can buy a car that's been in the flood and you don't even know about it and the, the engine is fucked up or the sensors are fucked up, especially when you work with the German cars, you work with the expensive cars like that. You, ha you run a higher risk, but with a higher risk comes a higher reward. Actually, a lot of fun to work with the high-end cars. I really enjoy them, especially when you make a car, you buy it all racked up, it's all banged up, but when you make a little candy out of it, you feel like, man, I don't want to sell it. This bitch looks so nice. You know, like that Corvette right there, or that, or that Beamer right there, you know? I'm going to show you a little, a little thing, right? Just for instance, there is a, a GL a Mercedes up there, like right there. Dude, I just started with Honda Civics and Honda Accords, and, Nissan Altimas and Nissan Maximas and Mazda Miatas like 98, 97, 96 and then was able to work my way up to like Maseratis and Beamers. I used to sell cars and flip cars to like, drug dealer pimps like hey Cap, what's up boy? What's been going on man? Shit man, let me get that Beamer man, let me get that Beamer. Let me put some D's in that bitch. Shit. Let me call my account man, how much do you want for that car man? Shit. You know like this one right here, right? They took a car that's been 
obviously it has been in burn now it's because it's been fire but the frame didn't melt the frame didn't burn so they took the car with the front end damage took the frame from the frame you see how everything is lined up they took the frame out of here and put it right here it's perfectly fine right the car is rebuilt legitimately rebuilt and then they drop the engine connect everything back up dude they bring the car back to life sometimes you like wonder like dude how do you know how to connect all that wiring all the sensors all that difficult shit but hey we know how to do it we have professionals we have specialists i mean this is this business is amazing or something like this you look at this audi right there's different ways of making money in the car business different ways sometimes you can buy this of auction tune it up spice it up we call it mickey mouse make a little mickey mouse out of it send it back to the auction make quick two thousand dollars seriously the, the the opportunities are limitless in this business you just really have to dip into it dive into it and give it all just like anything anything in life and the most important thing is to find your passion this was my passion at some point i got what i wanted i achieved what i wanted and then I felt like, okay, I lost interest in it and I moved on to something else, but I'm Russian. And I think Russians all love cars. It's just natural, it's a part of our DNA. We love cars, we love speed. For some reason, we love German cars, just like I do. Man, what a long day, what a long day. I inhaled a lot of car pain today, especially in the south side of Chicago. I'm really happy to show the hustle with you, show you the inside of it. There is so much underground, there is so much Behind the scenes, there are so many things that goes into it. There are so many, you know, illegal things that go into it. It's an interesting, it's an interesting side of business. It's an interesting side of industry, you know, the streetcar business. And there are some good people. There are some bad people. There are people that are driven only slowly by profit. There are people driven by creating quality cars. And it was interesting to relive this experience with you because I've really devoted a whole chunk of my life to, to this hustle and it's something that brought up the character in me, something that shaped, you know, the attitude and it really taught me the hustle way, the street way and taught me to respect the streets, taught me to respect the business and I'm not going to lie to you, this is forever, forever is going to stay with me. Most likely at one point in my life, I'm going to make a movie because this, this business and the stories that go into this business, you have no fucking clue. It's not weighing chicken six ounces and eating fucking rice every day. This is, this is crazy sometimes. Sometimes you really have to run and you have to run really, really fast. This is Artemis Dolgan. I call this video blog Russian Business. So, this is it. We are about to leave Chicago and we are very happy about it. It's very cold, it's snowy, but this is how I remember this now. It shaped my character, it sharpened my character. It made me stronger, bolder. It gave me balls, it taught me hustle. If you can make it in Chicago, you can make it anywhere. It was cool to share my story, parts of my story, stages of my life that really contributed to my move to Los Angeles and me becoming a person who I am today. I'm still in transition, I'm still searching, I'm still looking, I'm still moving forward. And I'm very happy to share this progress with you because I know there are many, many, many guys out there that can relate, that start from nothing and will achieve everything. This is 
is Arden McDolgan, Jordan Sandowski, Golden Aesthetics, Chicago. Которых я не знаю В терпком воздухе крик нет Последний мой бумажный пароход Goodbye, Amen. Yeah.